How's it going YouTube? We're back today with the new Holland L783 and as discussed last time it's leaking behind this front right tire. So what I did was I went ahead and pulled it somewhat in my garage because I don't know how long this repair is going to take me and we're at least out of the rain here. So what we're going to start is getting this end jacked up so this tire is off the ground. We'll pull the tire out and then we will proceed to pull off this access panel and see what it looks like back here. I got an axle seal rebuild kit offline for about $200 and the hope is that that kit will fix what we have going on in this. We'll be able to fill it up and then we'll be able to move this around some. Uh, one thing to note is I am terribly close to my garage door. And it actually looks like it might have dinged slightly on the far side, but overall, we got it in here. I have stuff in front of it. That is the two big air compressors I picked up and then some lights that I'm looking at putting up in here. So unfortunately, I couldn't pull this all the way in. Uh, but in the future, this tells me that if this is all the way down, then this will fit into my garage. So that's great news for future repairs on this. But without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk safety real quick. That jack is not doing anything at the moment. I have a three ton jack. is more than capable of lifting this up. But then I put a 10,000 pound jack stand under there, which should be more than enough. I can come over here and push on it. And really only the arms move. Everything else is still super solid. Three wheels on the ground, one jack stand. I'm going to start pulling these off. I've come up with this extremely scientific way to catch the oil that's coming out of the lower bolt holes into a two liter or any of those items that I have filled at this point. I've reclaimed seven to eight gallons approximately and it's definitely starting to slow down but this is just a long time game and every time one of these bottles is filling I'm going and finding another one that's cleaned out, dried out and ready to go and I'll just keep playing this game until it's done. Went ahead and got that drained down, uh, put the last 10 gallons or so through the trash tray. Have the piece that I took off over here, and it looks like they used some kind of RTV. I'll have to research and see if there's anything special all around this, so I will make sure I do that. This, I believe it's a guide, looks pretty good. This whole piece looks pretty good, so overall, I'm okay with that. Uh, looking in here... Everything looks pretty clean, but I'm not totally sure if this is where we want it to be. Regardless, we're going to have to drain this, so worst case, we have a couple extra bolts taken off, but I might, maybe I have to pull these gears and reach up in there, but I'll have to play with it some because there should be a retaining pin or a retaining nut down at the end of this half axle, and that's kind of what I'm trying to get to at the moment. So I'm going to start by saying that if we were doing this on the rear, you pull that plate and everything's right there. On the front, I found the final drive section for a similar model, the L785, not the L783. And they express that you do pretty much all the work through this little hole and you reach up there. Uh, we should be able to loosen this nut and knock this in a little bit, which will give us some slack in the chain. Then there's a couple other bolts we have to pull. And on the L785, apparently there's a little access panel on the inside also. We'll look and see if it's there. I'm not sure if it is on the L783. But if that's the case, you pull the hydraulic uh, assembly in the corner. And then you can get down into it to kind of get this done. Uh, other than that, it looks like it's absolutely going to suck. So... What I'm going to do for now is kind of follow what they're saying on here where I have a couple step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. Starting with loosening this, knocking this in, there's a pin that I pull. And then I have to jack up this wheel and spin this side until I find the master link. At the point that I find the master link out of the 80 freaking links in this thing, I can then pop the master link open and that will free up the sprocket in the front. So it's going to be a process, but we will get there. In the manual, ignore my shorts, they got, I sat in oil. But in the manual, it says that you take the final drive 
pressure relief valves and disconnect them and then you can spin the wheels. Uh, don't really want to get into the final drive if I can at all avoid it. So what I ended up doing was just turning the loader on and spinning the wheel some. Here is my master link and I need it to get down to here. So I can tell that just by pushing this wheel forward, it gives it slack there. So I'm gonna turn the loader on and spin this side forward a little more and try to get it to work down. The manual says you want it somewhere in here, I believe, but I'll verify that. Okay. <clears throat> Went ahead and turned the loader on. Check the diagram and actually it wants the master link right below this idler piece. So, and it says to note where this sits in relation to this before taking it off. Good thing I have it on video if there's a question. But now I should be able to pull this back, pop the piece out, and take my chain apart and continue on getting this piece done. Also, when I was spinning this, I went ahead and tightened back up that uh, piece there that controls the idler. So I just went ahead and Turn that back off, got the master link out, and now I should be good to, yep, just push this out, and I need to make sure that I catch both of those pieces, so I'll use both hands. But at that point, the chain should not be our problem anymore. Okay, so I went ahead and loosened that piece a bunch, pulled the cotter pin out of this. This was finger tight, so I'm spinning that off now. And what I'm going to try to do is remove that whole center piece, which shouldn't be too bad to do from what I see. I'm just filming this so that I know what order these all go back in. So I have your nut, then a small washer, and then it feels like it might be a bearing. I don't have to mess with that, but that's what it looks like in there at the moment. Okay, so that big bolt was sitting in here. I went ahead and pulled that all the way out. And the instructions doesn't have this one. Maybe the L785 is different. But it says to pull this off. And now I have my idler assembly loose in here. And it's supposed to pull straight up out of there. So I'm kind of looking at how I want to do that. And I'm seeing if there's a easy way that I can get these two out of the way. I tried to loosen from here, but it just seemed to kind of eat at it. I get started almost twisting this, so I'm concerned about just breaking that whole piece. I'll have to mess with it some and see what I can do. Okay, so in here, there's a hose that comes up, and I'll show it tomorrow also. That comes up and goes to the other side of this nipple. I have the hose disconnected, but then there's a big nut on the back of it that I'm not having any luck with. I'm also not having any luck with this fitting here. I tried our friend the fire and overall I think I'm just going to have to let it soak. So I think this is where I'm going to call it tonight. Um, lots of stuff pulled apart but just not quite there. Okay so in the instructions this piece has to come up. So I was thinking I'd have to get these off. Probably would have been easier. But what I ended up doing was I got that one piece disconnected, but I didn't get the back of this connection from in there. And I didn't even mess with this one after I saw this not looking so hot. What I was able to do was get the two front nuts off. And then in the back, there's a bolt in this corner that I got a good bit out. This bolt, I could barely get to turn. But um, apparently this whole assembly is supposed to just slide straight up and out. But it's like sitting on a little pe uh, pair of teeth. On the front, there's two sets and on, or actually, there might be just two sets or there might be four sets, but whatever it is, I bent this up enough and the entire plate's bent. I'm going to have to be very cognizant when I put this back together to try to torque it down and get all the bends out and I'll put the sealing in there it requires. But I got this bent up enough that I could pull this up and make it over the little teeth and slide the bottom this way. So at this point, I should be good to fully pull the idler piece out. So I have the idler assembly just laid down here. This would be the top of it, that would be the bottom. I just kind of slung it in there. I'm gonna try to leave it there. We'll see if I have to pull it out. Um, the next step is I have to reach up in here and there's the axle piece, which should be very similar to how we had the cotter pin and then the cap and all that on, I believe, yeah, this one. It should be a very similar setup to here. 
Now, as I reach up in there, I do see or do feel the dipstick that is right here. So we'll go ahead and pull this dipstick up and out and just kind of set this out of the way. And that should help me get a lot more finger clearance in there. Have this pulled out. There was the, similar to the front, a cotter pin that I destroyed. And then there was this little retaining clip but I actually had to loosen this bolt behind the retaining clip a little bit before I could get the clip itself out. And then there's a giant washer under it. At that point, you pull it forward. The little gear back there is now sitting at an angle because it's falling off of this. So I should be good to just pull this the rest of the way out. Okay, so I don't totally know how this is supposed to look because I am just figuring this out as we go. However, I have the bearing here that says 3780 right on the front of it. And that feels like it's got a good bit of play. Don't know how much it should have. I have an outer seal here. So I'm going to go ahead, or actually this might be your inner and your outer seal. Go ahead and pull the seal or seals out, pull this bearing out and see how everything looks. Okay, so I went ahead and looked at the new ones and figured out, I just put a pry bar in there, popped them right out. Uh, out came the two seals that were sitting like this, as well as the outer piece. So at this point, I'm looking in here and I think that this race looks good. So I'm not gonna worry about replacing the race. Um, however, I do have a new I did get a new one of these, so I don't think it looks bad, but that being said, I am gonna put a new one in. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw those in, clean this up a little bit, and then slap the new seals in there and start reassembling. Now, there's the outer seal, which is to the right, and then the inner seal here, which just looks caked with gunk and tore in that one spot. So I know I massacred the outer seal, which is the dust seal that stops dust from going in. However, it does look like there was a nice chunk taken out of my oil seal, which is the inside seal that would have definitely given us what I was experiencing. So I am going to go ahead and start reassembling. So I have my new race sitting there, or the new bearing. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned this out really well, and I'm gonna keep cleaning it out some more. The new ones, there's a slightly thicker one and a slightly thinner one. From what I can see on my old one, it sits like this. So your thicker one is toward the inside, and then they have flat backs, and the flat backs are against each other. These are, I believe, interference fitting, meaning they're just really tight to go in there. I'm gonna throw these in the freezer for a little bit, and then hopefully they shrink down a hair and I can put them in here and then I'll just let it sit for quite a while before I try to shove the axle through here. Just so that the seals don't get brittle and then break. I'll let the seals warm back up. Okay, so this has been in the freezer for about an hour and let's see. Not quite, not quite. But there's one more trick we can do. Let's put that in backwards. That would have been bad. Nope. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <sighs> Shoot. <laughs> oh. Whew. Okay. This is very hot now. So I'm gonna go put that back in the freezer and we'll try this again. It did slide in pretty well. So I just think I got this a little too hot. So the heat transferred into the ring really fast. 
So if I go throw this back in the freezer for about an hour or two and give this another shot, I think it might work much better. While that's in the freezer, I'm going to work on reassembling that hydraulic line that I took off that I didn't even need to take off. So I've made progress and I also did not make any progress. As you can see, the seals are not back in there, nor is the bearing. My really stupid decision, I had the bearings freezing for about 45 minutes, tapped them both, or not the bearings, the seals, tapped them both in and then realized I didn't put that bearing in. That's the new bearing there and it wasn't put in. So it was super easy to put them in, a little bit sketchy pulling them back out because I was worried about breaking the seals, but the seals both look like they're in great condition and I am now refreezing them in my freezer. Uh, about 45 minutes from now, we should be good to put the bearing back in and then the two seals in. So we're getting there, we're just not there yet. Okay, we now have the gear in there sitting in the race and we have the seals back in. So we should be good now. Um, I just went ahead and put this one back in in the same orientation as the other one and everything seems to be sitting really well. What I'm going to do now is actually let this sit for a little while because they came out of the freezer. I just want to make sure that these rubber gaskets get back up to temp. This light is putting off a little bit of heat so they should heat up fairly quick and I should be ready to start sliding everything back together. What I haven't decided is if I'm gonna replace the bearing on the inside also, just cause it seemed to be fine and I don't know if I wanna go through it, but we'll see what happens. The axle is back in. I got the large washer. There was a smaller washer that sits on the outside of that. Then there's the nut and then there's the little locking piece that the cotter pin slides through. I have all those on I'm just at the point where I need to tighten that down and then put the cotter pin back in. Now, I got it pretty much smoothed out. If it doesn't go in, I'll get a new pin. They're not that expensive. I also have to pick up some uh, RTV gasket stuff, so I can just do that at the same time if it's needed. But it's definitely coming back together, and I still have a gap here because I'll have to tighten this up some, and it's okay, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, the gap's there. So we are back, and it's actually a couple days later. Um, I just had a long week at work, a bunch of other stuff going on, and didn't get back to this. But where I left this off was, I have the bolts back in for this, but my cotter pin would not work. So I went ahead and went to Lowe's, grabbed new cotter pins, uh, a couple different lengths just to kind of see and we should be good to throw that in there and then work on getting this idler piece back in so i went ahead and got a couple different cotter pin sizes one and one half in one eighth inch by one and one half inch one eighth inch by one and three quarter inch and what i thought was one in or one eighth inch by two inch but it's actually a five thirty second i figured i'd start with a longer one went to put it in it was like oh crud i'm gonna have to go grab smaller ones came back checked my bags and realized these two are smaller and then i got a bigger one so the one eighth inch by one and three quarter inches was more than long enough probably could have gone away with a shorter one but because of how it goes and it's just curling back over the nut there's no problem with it and i'll see if i can get you a view on it so if you look there um uh, at the top is where the cotter pin goes out, and now directly facing the camera is where I bent the cotter pin back. So I don't know how much you can see, but it's in there. And next up is, because this has been sitting a couple days, I'm going to have to clean all this stuff off and then start putting all this back in. I'm having a heck of a time getting this to go back in, and... For some reason, I think I'm putting it in totally the wrong way. I think the head had to go in first if you don't have this cap off. So slide the head in, put this piece up into this gap, and then lift it up to get the leg on. I was trying to do it with, with put it in the bottom, but then you're not going to be able to clear the corner, and it's giving me a problem going in. So 
this is what I get for waiting, I think it's been a week, six or seven days since I've touched this. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this back out and try to maneuver it the other way. The thing that I believe I found out is the chain that goes from the top of the back sprocket comes straight to the top of the front sprocket. So it should sit like right under this bar once everything's tight. But that being said, I need to have the chain through there at the time being and the chain just adds, adds more complexity. So gotta love the mechanic side. I really do enjoy it though. So I'm gonna get at this and figure it out. How's it going YouTube? So we're back. A little bit later and I've gotten this sealed up I am missing three of these bolts that I assume I'll find as this process progresses and I've gotten this put back down this is all sealed the sealing on both of these is set for at least a day so we should be fully good um, the only thing kind of outstanding at the moment is this piece which sits right here to stop this bolt from just backing itself out over time I'm gonna have to clean up and put some like JB Weld in there to fix that up. Now, I am going out of town for five days, starting very early tomorrow. And I would really like to be able to have my garage door closed when I'm out of town. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't fabricate something together in order to get that JB Weld set up and start getting that setting so this evening I can pull this out of here. Other than that though, I think it's really just throwing the wheel in there and then hoping that there's no major hydraulic leaks. So I'm feeling pretty good about the process. It just took way longer than expected because of work and life, but I'm gonna go ahead and hop in here, uh, get some hydraulic fluid back in this and then start getting everything cleaned up. So I'm now filling back up with that uh, tractor fluid, hydraulic fluid from tractor supply and I ended up going with the slow but steady route of this so I have a short tube coming out the tube ends here and it's dripping into my funnel which runs into the tractor so this is going to go much slower than if I were to pour it but it's also a lot less work on my part I just have to monitor and make sure that where it's hitting in the funnel doesn't like work itself out to the side but while that's going on I have a lot of cleanup to do uh, so I'll just be cleaning up and monitoring this I assume that I'm going to have to run through this entire bucket and probably pretty much all of the next bucket that I have. And honestly, I might need to go buy a third bucket after that, but I'll go ahead and put these two in. And I think I'm being asked to run out and help somebody with something later today. So when I run out to help them, I'll just pick up another bucket if needed. Okay, so we are still going. I ended up grabbing another five gallon from the tractor supply store. And we're slowly having that dribble down in here. I'm just cleaning up everything else, getting the final things done. Once I get this done, I'm going to go ahead and just pour the rest of that in. It's going to be a little messy, but it's about 9 o'clock. I have to be up, or it's 9 p.m. I have to be up around 2.30 to 3 a.m. for my flight. So I'm trying to hurry this along and be able to close this door before I'm gone for five days. So stay tuned, and hopefully the next clip, this is outside. Okay. So, sorry about how dark it is. Skid steer is out of the garage and in the driveway. The boom controls aren't really working very well. I'm assuming that I'm gonna have to get the air out of the systems since I had that whole side drained. But that's a problem for another day. I got it where I want it and I believe the only thing I have left is that cylinder over there will be replaced in a future video since it has a leak up here. But that shouldn't be too bad to do. And that's kind of where we're going to leave off today. Uh, thanks for joining me. And I'm going to have a fun trip. You guys have a safe week. And I'll see you again soon.